shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcoxon, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor. This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, welcome back in Richards. Carter Wilcoxon here coming to you live on our Christmas show of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm very excited about our guest that we have on today. But before we get to him, let me go ahead and bring in my esteemed, amazing, spectacular, chemical-free body co-host himself, Mr. Tim James. Tim, how are you, bud? Carter, I'm doing good. I'm glad to have Dean Soames in the house today with us. Can't wait to hear, learn more about Dean, what he's got going on. Um, it's been raining a lot here in Portland, Oregon. That's all it seems to do now. It's that time of the year. Um, we did get a little bit of snow. My girlfriend and I went trail running um, yesterday morning, and there was some snow up on just some of the lower hills, which was pretty cool because it's we don't normally get snow. So that was kind of fun to run through the trails in the snow. Um, you know, just doing my thing, getting outside. You know, you, hey, here's a cool thing. Did you know that even even outside in a snowstorm or a rainstorm, you can get vitamin D. You can get your vitamin D. You just have to. It's very important because those UV UV rays are are still coming down. It's just you have to wear natural fiber clothing, and better if you can you know have the forearms exposed. That's good. But if you're wearing natural fiber clothing, those rays can penetrate through. But if you're wearing synthetics, polyesters, nylons, these types of things, microfibers, you'll block them. And you'll be off gassing that stuff into you. So there's a preview to the health segment that comes oh. at the end of the show right there. So vitamin yeah. D is important, people. It's important. It shoots holes in viruses. Boom, and boom, if you're, boom. If you're dark, dark colored skin, you need 15 times more. So if they tell you to don't go outside, don't look at the sunshine, and you have dark colored skin, you should be pissed off at your health officials because they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. <laughs> Well, we, here we go. We've already got the first exp, expletive out uh, right, <laughs> out, right out in the first segment. So that's, that's Merry awesome. Christmas. Yeah, Merry, <laughs> our Merry Christmas show. Don't be letting that shit get to you. Uh, well, hey, Tim, I, I, I'm very excited about our guest today coming in from uh, the Dallas uh, area, um, Dallas, Texas, which ironically, I am wearing my Cowboys. That wasn't planned, by the way. I got my Cowboys jersey on or my my pullover. Um, Carter, so, we've talked about this before. It is it is planned on a higher level. Your higher mind planned it through synchronicity because you're following your highest excitement. And Dean is following his highest excitement is right. This is exactly where we are supposed to be. You're supposed to have that Cowboys jersey on. Now, the question is, is does Dean like the Cowboys? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, that works, really. man. Yeah. From way back in the 90s to now, sure. Why not? Yeah. Okay. That, that Absolutely. Works out, that works out great. That's all, Well, we're going to have lots to talk about today on today's show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tim might not be able to t talk as much as he normally gets to on this show, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, I used to be a big 49ers fan, and my two buddies in, from grade school were Cowboys fans, so we always had bets and stuff going on. Oh, yeah. I got lucky when, when, uh, when Joe Montana was gone. They were like, hey. And they were laughing at me and they were i was like damn it but then steve young yeah. came in so i was like <laughs> it was like he couldn't even got any better dude but i did get it back again because then we got dion and then he freaking went over to the cowboys so yeah. i wasn't happy with that. <laughs> along, with charles haley. Haley. along with charles haley that's kind of funny yeah all right sorry introduce this guy no, He's no, awesome. no. hey you're all good so uh uh dean soames from Three Bell Capital, in, uh, and I know you guys have different office locations, and you know we'll give you a chance to expand upon that. I mean, I was on your website, and I, I saw you know four or five maybe different locations, but you are in Dallas, Texas, and our enrichers, as we call them, they they love to be able to hear each one of our guests' backstory. So let's go ahead and jump right into this this Christmas edition of the Health and Wealth Podcast Show, and again. And Richards, thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe and get all of our previous web um, uh, recordings from our guests at www.thehealthandwealthpodcastshow.com. So, Dean Soames, I was just having this conversation um, with, which I regularly have this conversation with our guest on the show about, you know, you're not, you, you, it's not like you're going to grade school and you're like, man, I can't wait to be a 
you know, money manager, financial advisor, you know, growing up and everything. So share with the enrichers, if you don't mind, like what was the infancy? What was the thing that led you down the path to go into the financial services industry and, uh, and, and share with us and expand as much as you want to on how that really got started for you? Sure. I mean, that's a great question. I think that you're right. You don't just really wake up one day and, you know, you're a kid. You mostly want to be an astronaut or a firefighter or something like that. A little, <laughs> I don't know many kids that uh, want to carry around a briefcase and say they want to work on Wall Street. But I think that the impetus for me was, um, you know, my, my dad was a big trader and, um, you know, I kind of followed him as a kid. And I got the opportunity to go work for a hedge fund when I was in high school. It was one here in, in Dallas. It was a long, short hedge fund uh, run by a few guys there. Uh, one of them actually went on to, to become famous in the big short, um, not the movie, but the actual trading and shorted subprime during the housing market. And so it was just an absolute brilliant shop. And this is back in the late nineties when technology wasn't really, uh, wasn't really there in terms of charting and, and uh, things like that. So, what they did for me was they bought a, a roll of paper that was about two and a half feet tall and rolled it out on the floor. And I would have to calculate by hand point and figure for corn futures. Um, mind you, I'm 17 years old at the time. And this is back when, you know, pink slips were, were still being thrown around, on, you know, and I'd have to reconcile the trades. Uh, so I'd have to call the trade desk in, in New York, reconcile the trades. And I was doing all these, you know, charting by hand. And at the end of the day, I'd I'd finished putting the X's and O's for the point and figure and they stand on top of a desk behind behind me and and look at what I had what I had drawn and basically make trades on on all of that. And they did really well. Um, and so that was pretty much the start of of my fascination with uh, with money and how money works and how it flows throughout the world and uh, decided to pursue it. Um, I actually ended up studying history and theater at uh in college but uh but actually just kept it alive and uh continued to work for the fund and um that fund manager is still a still a mentor to me to this day so it's been it's been a great ride wow wow so um so your dad kind of was your first influencer as far as going that direction then oh yeah definitely and it was all it was all technical analysis based too so he'd get the um Oh, I forget what they're called. They were blue and green books. Uh, their daily graphs was uh, was what they were called back in the back in the mid '90s. And he would get a ruler out and a pencil and draw trend lines on these on these graphs. I mean, it was it was pretty pretty basic, but you didn't have the computers that uh, back then that you do now, as you know. So everything had to be done by hand, and it was pretty new um, in terms of how to trade. Uh, technical analysis was back then, so it was cool. So so it's it's interesting. So you're you're a numbers guy, right? But then you go to get your degree in history, which is sort of like left brain, right brain, right? So that makes you a very balanced individual. So how you know what what was the uh, the the attraction, I guess, for history? But you're a numbers guy. You know that's yeah. So a lot of people have mentioned that too, and I guess you're right. I, I guess there's two sides to the to this coin, and um, so I I loved my history professor in, in high school. I was actually a former drill sergeant uh, for the U.S. Army, and just, I mean, he was he was just larger than life and made it fun. And I love this. I love the subject. And I think that history is important. I think if we don't learn from our past mistakes, we're just doomed to repeat them. So learning about the cyclicality of, of human emotion, which is really what drives history, um, is is what's so important and how it actually translates quite well into uh, into finance, to be honest. Yeah. So um, so. You know, it's here lately, I've been hearing a lot about emotional intelligence, right? So that's kind of sort of a little bit what, what you're talking about. How does, how does, do you see like emotional intelligence with what it is that you do, you know, day in and day out? Um, how does that reflect in someone's overall portfolio building and things like that? Sure. I mean, you know, it's fear and greed, right? That's what drives, uh, what drives the stock market. Um there's a, a trading psychologist, uh, his name is Dr. Van Tharp, and um, he's written a lot of books. And I think that, you know, he explains it best that, you know, 90% of trading is, is you know, controlling your emotions. And, um, you know, you can learn all the things that you want, but at the end of the day, if you're driven by your emotions, uh, you're doomed to failure. So I think that it's kind of this, 
this game that you almost have to play with yourself about, you know, making sure you don't uh, become trapped into the fallacies that, you know, us human beings tend to have uh, quite often. Yeah, and a lot of that is, I mean, as the saying goes, right, you buy low and you sell high, but all too often, it's the exact reverse, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're all just little lemmings following each other off the cliff at times. So, you know, I, I kind of like to, you know, be a salmon that swims uh, upstream a little bit sometimes and, uh, you know, be a contrarian uh, to see what see what really, um, and, you know, as you mentioned earlier in the show, you know, peeling off the layers of the onion. And I think it's important to, to study that and get your hands dirty. Yeah. So, um, so let's go back. Did now you born and raised in the, the Dallas Fort Worth area, correct? I was born in Indiana, actually. So I was born in Indianapolis, but we moved, uh, we moved down in, uh, 89 to Dallas. My dad was uh, general counsel for GTE and then, uh, you know, worked on the merger and acquisition with Bell Atlantic, which was which is now Verizon, and so that's where we were because the the world headquarters for GT got moved down to uh, to Irving, Irving, Texas, which is just like a suburb of, of Dallas. Um, yeah, well, it's where Cowboy Stadium used to be. Used to be. That's yeah. right. Yep, yep, the old one. That's yeah. right. And uh, as we were talking about on the, you know pre-show, or or maybe it was even when the show started about uh, you know I'm wearing my Cowboys jersey or my my pullover. I mean and. Um, yeah, that's where the 49ers dominated. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Well, true. All I know is that <laughs> I, I really don't even care anymore. I'm so, <laughs> so on that. It's like, I, I just doesn't really matter anymore. You had to throw was, it in. You, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to fit into the, to the sports stuff, you know, cause I was a big sports nut for years. I played baseball at a high level for 30 years and I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, I enjoy sports. I still like it, but you know, and, Guys were making millions of dollars and they get caught driving, you know, in yellow Hummers stoned out of their mind and stuff. And they're, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just frustrating watching some of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. Well, on, on that note, though, Dean, did you, I mean, growing up in, um, I mean, it's, you know, Friday Night Lights, right? I mean, you, you dealt with that. Uh, for, for quite a, a long time and everything. Did you play any sports growing up? I did. I didn't play football. Um, I was on the swim team in, in high school, um, which which I really enjoyed. And then actually was on the um, the ski team for Boston College. And so I, I skied giant slalom and slalom. It was great. D1. It was fun. Well, time out. Time out. Wait a second. Yep. You're OK. We got another first, Tim. Jay. <laughs> the first slalom skier of yeah. any one of our guests so far in giant slalom. And, and for myself and in Richards, what's the difference between slalom and giant slalom? I don't even know. So giant slalom is um, it's probably the thing that you're thinking of with the the the, the flags that you ski around. You know, yeah. slalom are these these um, they're plastic poles and they've got a spring at the bottom and they go. You know, you slap them down as you go. Yep. So the the Winter Olympics are coming up, I think, in what February, something like that. So yep. it's going to be a big big sport. And so that's what I used to do is is um, ski both of those events. So, and that's Boston College, obviously D1. Um, I'm curious, where did you get your training in Dallas for your skiing in Boston? No, that's a great question. <laughs> My mom used to be a ski instructor in Vail in the 70s. And so, oh, and her stories, I mean, you could probably interview her for a couple hours. It's, uh, it was, you know, it's kind of the wild, still the wild west of skiing back then. So she, um, she kind of got us, uh, got us into skiing. And, um, you know, there's a funny story of, of her and my dad, my dad, um, uh, my dad found out that all the, the ski bunnies in Indiana were belonged to the ski club and which my mom was a part of. And so he acted like he was a really good skier and goes in. And so my mom was like, Oh, you should go skiing with me sometime. My dad, you know, just was like, Oh boy, you know, and just kind of got caught. So they go, they go up to the, they go up to the mountain. And uh, of course, you know, the first run, it's just a yard sale for my dad. And she clearly knew right away that he was lying the entire time, but they hit it off after that. And so we just did ski trips as a kid and um, spent a lot of time and got into NASTAR racing, which was like a kind of like a, you know, basic kind of uh, ski racing. And that's kind of how I got my feet wet with that. And then I walked onto the team. Um, there were four people that tried out. They took two and I was one of them. Wow. Um, so four years of skiing in Boston College then? 
Four years of it. Yep, it's exactly right. Wow. Yep, That's I loved it. What was the what was your biggest highlight of like? Okay, so I'm a golfer, right? So I think about the golf course of that I've played because of the exposure to you know being in the golf world. In the ski world, I'm assuming there's got to be something like that, right? Like your your Masters or your you know uh, Augusta National or oh yeah of of skiing. So what was the what was the best experience that you got because of being a, a D1 skier? Um. There's two, there's two things that I could say about that. One, um, while I was racing, you know, going to, going to these big events, um, say like Killington, Vermont or Sunday river or Maine was just, it was just a thrill. And, and kill, uh, I think Killington, Vermont is the only one on the women's world cup circuit in the United States. So right now for the last couple of years, so it was pretty cool, um, to ski there. And then I spent, um, I spent about six months in living in Vienna, Austria, and got to ski in Salzburg and Zellense. And I actually got a chance to ski with some of the Austrian ski ski team members, and that was really really fun um, in Salzburg. And and I and there is um, there's the the big Super Bowl of of World Cup skiing. It's called the Honeycomb, and basically there there are more than a hundred thousand people that show up for this ski racing event in, in Austria, um, and it is. I mean, pre-COVID, that is, but uh, but yeah, it is just the it's the Super Bowl of, of skiing. I eventually want to do that. Um, I've heard some amazing stories. And it's just one big party. So so okay, a hundred thousand not participants. You mean just fans that come to this thing? Just fans from all around the world just come to this thing to watch uh, to watch the ski racing. It's downhill. So it's the you know it's just the the ones where they go you know 80, 100 miles per hour down the. Yeah. down the slope you know yeah. just it's over, extreme over a week's time is over a weekend i mean how long does the event take place? just a weekend okay. yeah i think it's like i think it starts like the week before and it just it just goes um just goes hard in the paint for seven days i mean just there's there's just no let up from the gas so that's what i've heard um so i really want to go and check that out someday well, it's on my I'm, bucket list uh, so that, that sounds like a drink fest too. I mean, there's gotta be lots of, you know, festivities going on. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Festivity. You, yeah. Lots of festivities of ev every nature. I'm sure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm curious because, and again, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really interested because I don't, I've never gotten a chance to talk to anybody that's like competed like this. I mean, I'm a outdoor guy, but I'm, you know, fishing, hunting, golf, baseball, you know, ball stick kind of guy. So, when you're hanging out with the the slalom giant slalom skiers, do you also hang out with those you know the guys that are jumping the ramp? And I mean, do you, do you run in different circles or is it the same circles? So no, it means so in, in collegiate sport we didn't really do a whole lot of that uh, ski jumping and, and things like that. But um, I know on the West Coast they did a lot more of that. East Coast we just really stuck to stuck to racing. Um, but even then you'd have separate teams. So. For like the U.S. ski team, there's going to have they're going to have a, a snowboard team, and they'll have their own divisions of what they're you know the class of events that they're in. So mine was just the just the racing events and hung out with those guys, and we we're all you know we're all crazy. There's 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 nothing but two blades on your on your feet, and pretty much no other protection other than a helmet. So it's uh, you know you go as fast as you can down a hill. So. Well, you know, I, I still remember, um, remember like the ABC sports thing. Where, Olympics, man. No, no, no. They, in the, in the morning, the, the agony of defeat. Remember those commercials in the beginning and that guy went crashing off the, uh, during, I think it was during the Olympics. And, uh, yeah. as a kid growing up, I always remember that. I was like, thought to myself, that is the scariest looking thing ever. Yeah, that was, um, I, I think you might be talking about Herman Meyer. He was an Austrian uh, ski team member, and he had one of, the, one of the worst crashes, I think, that's ever been captured on air. The guy walked away from it. He was a beast. It was amazing. Um, and that now they have airbags. So um, the, the skiers actually wear these protective, like, vests, and they act like airbags. So if you were to crash, they actually help. They blow up and, and like, create a, a cushion for you. Wow. Back, I think that's relatively new over the last, say, five or six years. I don't know when they when they required to wear them, but uh, yeah, we didn't have any of that stuff back then. And so you were injured. You you got you got pretty injured if you if you fell hard. Yeah. I and I definitely did. So, yep. Well, I, I have I have one last question. I know we're coming up on a break. I have one last question. Sure. 
did you anticipate as you were, I mean, Boston College wasn't your only choice, I'm sure, but were you anticipating when you went to Boston College that you were going to try to walk on to be a skier there? No, I don't think so. So I, 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 um, I heard about the ski team as, as pretty much as soon as I stepped step foot on, on campus. And, um, you know, because I wanted to play another sport. I really enjoyed swimming in high school. And so I said, well, what can I do here at a D1 school that I have a chance at, <laughs> a chance at making? And, um, and so I, I, just, I just gave it a shot. I uh, had my, my parents send me my ski equipment, and I took it to the hill for tryouts, and the rest is history. Wow. That's cool. Cool. Great story. Uh, it's, bringing, it's literally bringing back memories. I'm thinking about when I was a kid, I was watching the Olympics a lot. And I remember watching that guy wrecking all the time off the off the side. And I, I used to really enjoy the the downhill slal, slalom, uh, those races, because those people are just flying down the hill. Flying. Yep. Yeah. You know, like you're watching the, the, you know, the gold medal and it's like they're above it. They're below it. They're above it. Below it and Aces points. It's such yes. A cool thing. They, I mean, they look around and then like, yay or nay. You know, it's like, it was yeah. Like, fractions of a second hundreds of a second yeah. that's how they're determined yeah. it's, it's pretty amazing yeah, yep. cool so we're going to take a bit quick break and when we get back we're going to check in with dean and what he's doing today as a senior wealth manager we'll be right back estate planning what does that even mean when the inevitable happens for everyone on this planet your estate plan kicks into action but first let's start with what an estate is an estate is simply everything you own. Now, here's the issue and what needs to be understood when this event occurs. You only have two choices on this plan. Number one, either you plan how your estate gets handed out and distributed to those you leave behind. Or number two, your state decides who gets everything you own. For the first time ever, you can now take complete and total control of this plan that you've been deprived of for most of your life and generations before you. You can get personalized assistance along the way with a team of specialists whose job it is to make sure you have true peace of mind. It's important to understand that estate planning is a journey and rest assured that our team will be available to you all along the way and at every step. Welcome to eState Plan, home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. To learn more, make sure to reach out to your local advisor licensed with us or go to our website for more information. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here with my co-host Carter Wilcoxon. Back in the house, we've got Dean Soames with Three Bell Capital. He's a senior wealth manager. Dean, what's going on over there, brother? Tell us all about what you're doing today. I yeah, do so all in one breath, just so you know, Carter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's exciting actually. Um, the firm has grown quite a bit. I actually I knew the CEO uh, John Porter for a couple of years prior to joining the firm. Actually, um, I've only been at Three Bell for about uh, a little over six months. Uh, part of that I was at the Bank of New York, uh, working as a wealth manager there and uh, sat on their fixed income committee. Um, and so John actually, just as a friend, just said, hey, you know, I need some help uh, institutionalizing my firm. You know, would you be willing to help? And we talked for a while and I tried to help him out, you know, while I was at the Bank of New York and then eventually decided to to jump ship and, and go work with, uh, work with him. He had um, started it in 2009 and grew it from zero to you know where we are a little under three billion under management and it's all been all been referrals um so a lot of our clients are going to be um mostly tech entrepreneurs in in northern california but we have clients everywhere i was on a zoom call with a client in israel he uh he makes uh He's the largest blueberry farmer in Israel, believe it or not. And so it's it's just really interesting the people that we meet and the clients that we have. Um, and so it's been it's been really good. We're we're forming some really neat uh, neat products in house and uh, started the the Dallas office here. And so with a with a colleague of mine. So it's been we're growing pretty quickly. It's great. Wow. So uh, so six months. So when we first started talking about you being on the podcast, I mean you were, I mean just getting your feet wet. Yep, that's exactly right. I was. Yep, but it's been uh, a seamless transition. I mean, it's just been it's been wonderful. And the colleagues that I have there at Three Bell um, are just cream of the crop. They're great. They're really fun to work with, but they're also really brilliant. So, 
So now, you, so now you said you knew the CEO previously prior to you coming to Three Bell. So who no. initiated the move? Was it you? Was it sort of, you know, you, you kind of just made sense? I mean, was it? I mean, how did that transition happen? No, I love the Bank of New York. I didn't have any intention of moving. Uh, it was John who actually asked me for some help. And uh, it was just over over many months of, of time, just talking with him, that he realized that um, that he probably needed me in his, in his house, uh, helping him work on uh, on these big projects that we've got going on. So I think that that's um, I think that's what really did what, how he instigated it. He came up to me and, and asked me for help. So yep, gotcha. Now, um, so how did you meet him originally? Then, if um, if you were at Bank of New York and yeah, you know, been around since 07, you said, right? Yeah, 09. Yep, exactly. Something like that. Yes. And so I think that, um, so it was a, a friend of mine uh, who works at JP Morgan Institutional, and uh, I think Three Bell Capital was was a client. And so they, uh, it was uh, it was a late party uh, in Dallas that he had flown out for. And we just, that's how we met and just had a blast. And I mean, I can't say, can't say enough about the guy. So we just became really quick friends and stayed friends for, you know, for several years now. So it's been nice. Yeah. So he, he initiated, he wanted you to come over there. And then, so how long were you at Bank of New York then before that took place? Just a couple of years. Um, I was only, I was only with them for a very short amount of time. Prior to that, it was at a, as a single family office here in Dallas. And so I worked with, uh, worked with them as the, the senior portfolio manager focusing on, on hedge funds and um, you know more technical analysis in house programs and stuff like that. Gotcha. So um, so you guys are are growing. What is the what would you say? And I know it's mainly it sounds like referral base, introductory base, and everything. Um, and you've got office locations. Actually, talk a little bit about the different office locations. You just started the Dallas office. Where are the other locations at in the country? So I think that we've got uh, some locations on the East Coast. Uh, the biggest bulk of our business is going to be in, in Northern California, uh, where it was first established. And that's always going to be kind of the, the world headquarters, I think, for, for Three Bell, at least for the time being. But uh, I think Dallas is quickly growing to be uh, another large office. And I think it's probably going to be the, the second largest here pretty soon. So, yep. Well, uh, share with the enrichers then, what, what does the ideal um, client look like for you who who is it that you're normally working with or the the vast majority of the the makeup of three bell what does that look what do they look like yeah that's a great that's a great question i think that uh you know we specialize in in entrepreneurs uh business owners uh families certainly that um, maybe had an exit event from selling a business and have complicated structures they need work with uh with trusts um estate planning things of that nature insurance we kind of uh, help them on that sophisticated level, and it's not just investing. Uh, that's just a small part of what we of what we do for our clients, and and I think that that's that's really what we try to focus on and and help them and grow them for multi generational uh, wealth. Nice. So, um, as your is there a centralized location then in Northern California that you're predominantly working out of, or would your clients know any different when you're having communication simply because I make an assumption. A lot of times you can have virtual meetings, although prior to us, you know, hopping on here today and recording this, you said you've been flying all over. So maybe you're pressing the flesh uh, across the country then. Absolutely. So I think that, you know, COVID, COVID changed for a lot of, a lot of people in the way that businesses are run. Um, technology is certainly, uh, I think a silver lining of, of COVID, if there is one, is that there's been a rush to improve technology and remote access for, for workers. And so for us, there really isn't a need for, um, you know, one office like, like how business used to be done. We can basically do it from anywhere in the world uh, as long as we have internet access and a, and a computer. Um, so it's easy for us to, to be able to communicate with clients, get things done on a very timely manner and and be able to be there when, when they need us, uh, both internally and for the clients. Gotcha. So whenever you're working with your, um, you mentioned some one of your clients was in Israel, right? So how how does that even happen? I mean, are you pushing out social media things? Are you just just word of mouth and someone just happens to 
know someone in Israel or yeah, pretty much yep. Australia. Is that the yep. job? We've got clients in Australia and Hawaii. Um, yeah, it's, it's an international, uh, international list. And so it's, uh, it's great. Um, I think it is just all referral based. Um, and that's kind of what I'm getting. Uh, people are really excited and, and we like, we like that, that era of excitement at the firm. Nice. Now, um, obviously you, you talk a lot about like endowments and, you know, it sounds like a multifamily office sort of a feeling is what it, uh, what I'm hearing. Yes. Is there, is there kind of a, a threshold in order to be, get access to three bill and Dean Soames? Well, I mean, obviously we want to, to make sure that we can give them the best amount of service uh, possible. Um, and so, you know, I don't know if we have a real stated minimum that, uh, that we want from clients, but if they do have an estate that needs, uh, that needs help or, or possibly, uh, work with other family offices on their investment side, uh, that's kind of what we do. Um, it's a case by case basis. We don't really like to set bars where we might exclude someone from being a really good client. So. Really, we just kind of try to meet everyone we can, try to help them. And if we can't help them, we try to help them by referring them to someone else that we trust. Gotcha. I got you. So um, when it comes to, because our foundational approach that we have at, at uh, Epic Services is really helping the mass affluent out when it comes to estate planning and demystifying why estate planning, aka family succession planning, is so critical. You know, all too often, and I don't know if you deal with this in, in your day to day or not, but all too often we hear how, um, you know, people think they, they sort of conflate estate taxes and estate planning as one and the same. And as we all know, there's a very few men, there, there's very few people, households and mass affluent, especially that have an estate tax problem at this juncture. Um, so the, the thing that, that always sort of surprises me pleasantly is that when we help to demystify on delivering what we call the three E's, where we educate, enlighten, and empower these households through our advisor network that, look, if you care about your family and if you want to make sure that you have a seamless transition of assets, the, the optimal thing to do is make sure you have a team of specialists to make sure that that next generation is set up in a great position so that, number one, most importantly, we were talking about emotional intelligence earlier and, and that the, uh, the mentality of whenever the matriarch and patriarch pass away to set up that family to not fracture themselves. Right. So do you deal with some of those things in your day to day as you're, as you're helping to become this all encompassing, it sounds like again, planning strategy, this, this ecosystem of people that are providing services. Yes. I think that it's, I think the the E of education is probably one of the most important parts when, you know, wealth is being transferred to multiple generations. Uh, I think that the, the majority of wealth is lost on that second and almost gone by the third generation without proper um, you know, structure in place and education. Uh, and that's, that's vitally important that you communicate with the client on an ongoing basis, even more so when it comes to the second generation than it was with the first generation. So, Yes, I agree with with pretty much everything that you just said. And, and E of education is by far my my personal, uh, you know, you know, favorite thing to do in in, in helping the clients. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Carter, I got a story about education. It's really important, listeners. So check it out. This buddy of mine back in the day had a roommate, and his roommate was a logger. So he'd get up every morning and put on his boots and go saw logs up in the woods chew his tobacco and um his parents passed away and uh, he gets a phone call from a stockbroker and the guy said come on downtown we got to get some money for you here from your parents he's like okay so he shows up in his dirty boots up in this high-rise deal and he says hey um so uh, how much how much of this money do you want he's like i'll take it all he's like well do you know how much you have here he's like um i don't know 20 30 grand or something like that he's like uh, just a little over a million He's like, oh, okay, well, why don't you give me 500000 <laughs> So this guy has no experience with money. Now, he owed my friend 3000 bucks, and he's, he'd, owed, he'd owed him this money for a long time. So he gets a hold of his friend. By the time his friend, uh, my buddy, gets home, he's already packed his bags. He's booked the trip. He's gone. Like He quit his job. He just took off, left, gone. Like 
Didn't he, boss, I'm out of here. No two weeks. See ya. And um, he's like, oh, cool. And he's like, hey, man, you got all this money now. That's great. He's like, can you pay me my 3000 Oh, dude, no problem. Sure, when I get back, no problem. So this guy travels around the world for a year, and he just get drunk phone calls in the middle of the night. Um, he'd get postcards from Belize, postcards from Mexico. He was all over the place. He comes back, and finally, John's like, hey, look, dude, um, you're back now. It's great. He goes, but, you know, I'm, I'm counting on it, right? Cause I need that three grand you owe me. And he's like, you said you'd pay me. He's like, man, I would have. I, I was going to pay you. I promised you I was going to pay you. But he's like, what do you mean I was going to pay? He's like, money, man. It's all gone. He's like, what are you talking about? How, how could you be? It was over a million dollars. He's like, well, you'd be surprised how fast a million can go. <laughs> and, and he literally went on this bender, just partying. And, and, and he's like, yeah, he. He, he like sent him like a postcard and he's like, dude, I just bought a beachfront property down here in this third world country somewhere. He bought like properties here and there and he didn't even know what he bought, where he bought it or nothing. So, yeah, I think it's pretty important. That might be an extreme case, but it's very important to get educated because if your children are not educated and you don't have things in place, that money's going to go away very quickly. It's going to go away very quickly. It's just like all these people that they, they win the lottery and most of them will tell you a year, two years later. They file bankruptcy. Their life's a disaster. It ruined all their relationships, and you know they get in trouble. All money does is it'll exasperate what's truly going on inside of them. So that's what's really important. And a lot of people need work in that area, work on self, work on their health, work on their personal spiritual mission and all that stuff, and a lot of people aren't doing it. So I think it's really important to have people like Dean out there educating them so they can keep – you know, because you can work hard for your money. Sorry, guys. You work hard for your money, and – um and you want to donate or you're not donated, but you want to will it onto your kids and grandkids. You know, that's, that's where trust and all that stuff and the planning really, really takes place because you can control your money above ground and below ground. I know that's what Carter does really well over at their Epic. Yep. That's exactly right. That's a great story. It's very true though. Yeah, it's I mean, funny it's, though, right? I mean, yeah. like, there was more to the story, but I, I you know, exp explicit, what do you call it? Ex exploitives or whatever. Yeah. Expletives. Lots of cuss words in that story. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, look, I mean, the, the number one um, concern that uh, that we hear on a regular basis as we, you know, on the front end, educate these households. And I don't know if you know the statistic or not, um, Dean, but 83 percent of Americans. This is from a Wealth Council um, uh, survey that they did back in 2016. I'm sure it's not any different than it was back then, but 83 percent of Americans don't have this necessary tool that we call a revocable living trust. And the reason why I believe is twofold. Number one, as I mentioned earlier, they conflate estate planning with estate taxes. Uh, I only got $800,000. What do I need a uh, trust for? I don't need any estate planning, right? I don't have an estate tax problem. So that's number one. Number two, and we've known this for a while now, for the five years we've been refining our onboarding process and educating the mass affluent out there. And nothing against attorneys, attorneys, if you're listening, but people don't like attorneys. They just don't want to deal with an attorney. Tim is a perfect example. We've been helping his parents because they, you know, they're older generation. They don't want to have to go deal with an attorney. And what they think is in order to get this type of work done, they have to go see an attorney and an attorney is part of the process. But our the beauty of, of our platform is that we've embraced the digital transformation. We can help clients out all over the country. It doesn't matter where they live to get their affairs in order. And that's how we sort of simplify it. Right. I mean, they understand when you say, hey, let's give you the true peace of mind of getting your affairs in order. Right. Oh, OK. I get that. Right. Family succession planning, not estate planning. That's industry jargon that we use on a regular basis. They hear family succession planning. And now all of a sudden you brought it down to their level and they're like, oh, yeah, I have a family. I, I know what planning is. I want I want a successful plan and a succession and everything. So anyway, the point being, Dean, is that the number one fear that these households have that we talk with and we educate them is what's going to happen to their stuff when they're no longer around, right? You and, and if you don't do the proper planning, if you don't set up a distribution plan, then the number one thing that happens, you just mentioned it, right? It's it's called, um, what do they call it? Shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations, yep. right? 
And, and we don't want to do that. We want to set those families up for success. And all too often, when you inherit money, and I don't care if you're a quote unquote spendthrift or not, when you inherit money, you could be the most successful doctor on the planet. You just got a $1.2 million from mom and dad. Guess what? Well, now I'm going to put that wing on the house that I wasn't going to do before. Now I was going to do that. And now all of a sudden, the hard earned money that mom and dad, matriarch and patriarch, that they that they created, it's gone, right? Because yeah. you didn't create that. Mom and dad created that. So anyway, having that family succession planning is so critically important so that you can be able to set those families up for success. And all too often, a lot of times the family fracturing that can happen if you don't do that, especially when you're dealing with smaller estates, 500,000, 600,000. That's a ton of money to some people, right? I mean, I'm not talking about, well, I've said this on the show, I don't, countless amounts of times. I believe and where my passion lies is that those families that have that 500 to to $5 million need a lot more help than those who have the 5 million to 500 million. Yes, I agree. And I think it's important, you know, it's, it's important for people like you and I to kind of ease the blow of talking about some really dark stuff, you know, dying or what happens if you get hit by a bus and you're a vegetable, you know, like it's, it's very, very difficult to, to kind of want to talk about that or need to talk about it, especially, you know, to your spouse or, or your other loved ones. But it's so important to have that in place, even when you're young. I mean, I have it. Uh, you know, I, I started doing that when I was 30 because I just didn't want to to be a burden, I think, that uh, of, of having my family try to figure it out for me or what my wishes were. I was able to just line them out. And it actually started as a Word document, uh, to be honest, and then eventually, you know, turned it into something a little bit more legal. But I think it's important just to even jot it down on a piece of paper or on a Word document and then go from there. Um, and, you know, it's, it's important for people like you and I to, to help them out with that. Well, I think you're right there, buddy. I think people are not wanting to talk about death. They don't want to talk about um, being incapacitated. Um, I know a lot of people don't even like talking about poop. That's why my shirt says love when you poop, because I want to get that conversation started. So anyway, guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to let uh, Dean ask me any question he would like about health. We'll be right back. You want the absolute best for yourself and you want it to be easy. That's why we created Green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently. We're proud it's chemical free, unlike almost all other supplements you'll find. Bottom line, Green 85 will get you healthier. We look forward to hearing what Green 85 did for you. To get this product and our other amazing products, go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. What's up, and Richards? Tim James here. I'm back with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon, the Health and Wealth Podcast Show, as he calls it. I just think we should call it the Health and Wealth Show. I think we should shorten it up. But what we're going to uh, do, what's that What's that game where you – Thumb warrior. When I actually finally get to meet thumb wrestling, thumb wrestling. When I meet Carter, we're gonna thumb wrestle over that. So, all right, we're back. We got Dean in the house. We'll go ahead, Carter. No, I'm sorry. Let me just jump in. It's funny because I was just talking to someone the other day. I said, you know, we've now launched 40 episodes this coming Wednesday. We'll have 40 episodes. Tim, isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's pretty cool, dude. 40 episodes, but you and I have physically never met. I'm like, I'm like, I know Tim so well. That it's like we're brothers, but we physically have never met. So our first encounter is going to be a thumb wrestle. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll get it on video. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, so, Dean, this is the point where I, I ask you questions about health and you educate me. Are you ready? Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. You look like a pretty healthy guy. You like taking care of yourself, right? Yeah, I mean, I I, I do. Um, you know, and I think that it's important to – to keep health, uh, you know, in check because I think that your mind and, and body work uh, work together. So it's kind of important. Kind of important, right? Yep, exactly. So 
what questions do you have for me about health, public health, your health, your family's health, kids' health, baby's health? I don't care. You get you get a kangaroo? Well, I might not be able to help you there, but maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, you know, I, I think you're right. I mean, you know, we were talking about athletics in, in the first part and, mm -hmm. and about nutritional supplements. And, you know, some there's there's a hot debate on, on what supplements work and what don't. Um, you know, I'm, my, I'm curious to know, you know, what your thoughts are on, on just taking supplements in general. Uh, I've seen people with, you know, kitchen counters full of them, but I've also yeah. heard that they don't do diddly squat. So some do, some don't. I don't yeah. know. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, first off, people have to understand that 85% of the supplements in the market are made by pharmaceutical companies. 90, and those are synthetic. 92% in total are synthetic. So these are synthetic nutrients I don't, I don't even why they call them a synthetic it's not a nutrient okay it's a synthetic acid based it's it's synthesized it's made in a lab so i'll give you an example what they do is these companies they, they go out to nature and they find something that's awesome in nature and then they synthesize it so perfect example they go to nature and they take the arceola cherry or the camu camu berry right these are a couple places where you can get vitamin c but then when you look on your vitamin C and your multivitamin, or maybe you're buying vitamin C by itself or liposomal vitamin C, if it says vitamin C and then in the parentheses behind it, it says ascorbic acid, you're consuming a synthetic. So they take like one single part of the whole and they say that's just as good. And it's not. It doesn't come with the full full spectrum of all those bio flavonoids and cofactors the way it was explained to me that where i could understand it was he said tim taking a vitamin c like that is like a young uh, is like this nutrient this 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 at this, this this synthetic coming into the body it's like somebody that picked up a, a rock guitar electric guitar that never played before and they're just making a bunch of noise okay and it comes into the body and the body doesn't know what to do with it it might feel an effect but it's 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 actually lowering the immune system now, sometimes people will be like, well, but I take that and it makes me feel better. Well, there's this thing called the placebo effect as well, right? So it's it's twofold. It's actually threefold. There's another thing. So, you know, when people take drugs, they give them the sugar pills and sometimes, you know, anywhere from like, what is it, 12 to 73% of the people taking the sugar pills heal because they think that taking that is going to heal them. So in their mind, their body is powerful and it recreates those chemicals in their body and they heal themselves. Right. So and then the third point is, is sometimes like especially with vitamin C, um, as an example, ascorbic acid can have a benefit. It can like for emergency situations, you need it. That's fine. But see, what we believe is why not just go to the source, right? Go to the source that's been billions of years of evolution. It it's it works with the human body beautifully. It comes in and it's it's carbon based form. We have a carbon based body and then we do that. So that's what you're looking for, Dean. So you're looking for the carbon-based, food-based, herbal-based type of supplementation. And once you have that, so if it says vitamin C, parentheses behind it, camu camu berry, arceola cherry, amla berry, now you know that you got a whole food source, right? But you have to look at the other ingredients because the other ingredients are also ingredients, and you're consuming those. And unfortunately, that 8% that's left, a lot of them now, more than half of them, you'll see where... They have a whole food source and they have a synthetic source too. So it's kind of this blend. So those for me are out. Okay. If I eat brownies, I don't want cat poop in my brownie. So I'm not going to eat it because I don't like cat poop. It's not my favorite thing to eat, but I will eat a brownie. Okay. So that's the way I look at those. Now, the same thing, another version of that cat poop is the binders, fillers, or flow agents that they put in these supplements. They're called excipients. These are to help because uh, especially Americans – you know, if you take a synthetic and it, it barely fills up an eighth of a capsule and most of the capsule is empty, you're going to be you're going to feel short changed when you buy that. Right. Oh, yeah. You're going to be like, what the hell? How come these For capsules sure. are you're you're going to be calling that company? Say, what the hell's wrong with you guys? Well, they have to fill that in. So what are they going to fill it in? Magnesium stearate, silicon dioxide, dicalcium phosphate. These things are toxic. Silicon dioxide, as an example, level three toxin on the EPA's toxin list. Yet it's in most supplements. Check your cupboards. OK. So these wow. things are done that that's a filler. Now they do the same thing. Flow agents, these encapsulation machines that fill the capsules tend to cake up, especially with naturally occurring ingredients, raw materials. So they put these flow agents in there to flow 
the ingredients through so they don't cake up for speed of production. That's good for money, but not so good for your health. So you have to look out for these things. We are like our company, Chemical Free Body. I built the, the supplements. We're a, we're a coaching company. That's what we do. We are education-based because people have to get awareness and educated. We want to do it that way. We don't want to come from a fear standpoint. We want to come from an enlightenment standpoint. We want people to move forward towards something. Unfortunately, though, we still probably get 70% of the people coming us today because they're moving away from something. They got diagnosed with X or Y or Z, or they're tired of being 50 pounds overweight, or they're sick and tired of their skin. They're, they're looking 20 years older than their friends, or they just want whatever. They want to get off the medications. Either way will help people. But the reality is, is people need to get their awareness and then they, they need to move towards something. That's where you, that's, that's a better place to come from. But so we developed the supplements because of my own frustration as a coach, reading the labels and going deep because it started for me in the food industry, actually, like reading labels on food and reading labels on things I was drinking. And then finally, when I added uh, whole food supplements to my life, that's when I took my health up a couple nother levels. And I was like, whoa. And then I got in. I read a book called Supplements Exposed by Dr. Brian Clement, and it, it highlights all the stuff I'm talking about. It's crazy. And you're like, what? And they actually show pictures of curly and photography, actually synthetic vitamin C versus a whole food vitamin C. They take an energetic picture of it and you can take a six year old child and show them that both of those pictures and say, which one, which one do you like? And every time they'll, boop, they'll point at the full spectrum one, just a six year old child naturally instinctively knows that's what is good. Right. And, and, and unfortunately we get so busy and we, we're so inundated and we don't know what to do with our health. When we really do the good marketing takes over and they get us. Right. And they get us to start taking this stuff. And then we get this effect. We don't know what. And then we just keep buying it because we had an effect back in the day. But the reality is, is most of these supplements, the ingredients themselves are not good. And then you have the other ingredients that will even draw down a little bit on the um, if they put a good formula together. And I've already helped over a dozen companies that had good formulas, but they had crappy other ingredients. Get that crap. Get that stuff cleaned up. But the owners just didn't know. They're like, yeah. okay, this great formula. They send it off to the manufacturing plant, and guess what? They put that stuff in there, and it's it's okay. It's a GMP certified facility. It's you know FDA approved facility, but in small amounts, they allow that stuff to go in there. To me, small amounts of cat poop and brownies is not good, and I sure as hell don't want something that's a level three toxin in my supplements, especially if you're really trying to get healthy and you you're taking you know three, four, five, six. You know, like some people they have these big, huge countertops full of this stuff. They're, they're, they're grasping, grasping, trying to get their health. And, you know, we usually can help them do that with a supplement review. We go through their labels, we educate them on it. And then people start getting educated and like, oh my God, like if you look at ours, I don't know if you can see this, but can you see where it yeah. says magnesium stearate, no silicon dioxide, no dicalcium. Yeah. That's why do I put that in big red letters? Because I want people to awareness. They're like, wow. And then they go look at their stuff. They're like, oh man, I got magnesium stearate in mine. Oh, it came from diseased cow bones. Oh, it came from genetically modified sower coin, or they were feeding that to the cows. Why would you want to put that in your body? It just doesn't make sense, even if it's a little bit. So that's kind of the whole way to look at it. So what you want is you want whole food, herbal stuff. And we took it to a whole nother level where we, we make sure that everything's sun dried or air dried under 110 degrees to keep the life force of the enzymes active. So it's really important because it's not just the regular nutrients you think about like vitamins minerals trace minerals there's hormones oxygen phytochemicals enzymes and in those enzymes those are the carriers of electric like you know electrons we talk about this all the time bio photons rain down from the sun they're captured on the leaf of a plant via photosynthesis chlorophyll is made there and inside there those amino acids and these enzymes are there and inside of those things are electrons so when you're eating living food like sprouts or taking um, a supplement that's been cared for very gently, as you take it into the body, it's literally, and you chew it uh, as far as food goes, or you take that supplement in, it's actually going to transfer those electrons directly into your body, boom, like really quickly. That's why when people drink our greens, they'll feel like an uplift um, just instantly as it's going in their mouth. Some people that are more sensitive, right? People that are like Reiki masters and people that are intuitives, they they really pick up on it a lot more than a lot of us that have been, you know, dumbed down with harmful of swallowed. Uh, please call contact the poison control center toothpaste that we put in our mouth every day and all this other, you know, Glade air fresheners, all this garbage. So um, hopefully that answers your question on supplements. 
It does. That was uh, that was great. I mean, you know, you educated me uh, quite a lot there. And you know, my question is, you know, it's overwhelming. Uh, now I'm going to be spending the entire night uh, researching and looking through my cabinets. So how do I? I mean, you know, it's it's it, it is. It's overwhelming. So I know that you know nutrition and buying you know vegetables and things like that. But I mean, it's. I mean, what are some you know besides you know the supplements that you have? Where can I go to? You know, just what, how do I need to educate myself on, on what to buy at the grocery store too? I mean, you know, it's well, we actually, um, in our group coaching community that we have, um, when people join, like when you purchase our products, you can either just join directly or, uh, it's a, it's a monthly, uh, membership and you come in and we give you all of our manuals. I have over $2,500 worth of manuals in there. One of them is the, uh, chemical free body shopping guide and, it could have been a lot. It was a lot bigger guide. I necked it down and made it as small as I could, but I actually made a huge shopping list of things that are on the approved list just to make it easy for people when they're shopping. And there's a list of things to avoid in certain, you know, top 10 things to avoid or the top different sugars and stuff because they hide sugars. They, they call it different things. Though. They'll call it like dextrose, right? And, or, and people just, they don't, they don't know that that, sh that, that sugar, right? Or yeah. they'll call it uh, xylitol uh, from the birch tree. But it's still, I think, 65% sugar, right? So sugar, sugar, sugar. And, you know, some versions are better than others. I mean, if you somebody was going to do a sugar, as an example, I would say, if you really want a natural sugar, I would do dates or date sugar or molasses. Those would be the ones I would recommend. But if you want things that are sweet, that are non-sugars, that are actually good for you and good for people that are diabetic or something like that, or you just don't want sugar in your body, a good stevia, um, stevita, stevita brand stevia um they have the liquid one that one's not processed with chemicals and then also if you're going to do the powdered stevia, that's about 100 times sweeter than sugar by the way like one drops like a teaspoon of sugar it's awesome um but some people don't like the aftertaste of it right but the stevita one's processed different and the people that don't like stevia most of them can take it they just do less amounts and it's okay and they don't get that aftertaste like about 25 percent of people do some people hate stevia. Well, it's probably because you got it processed with chemicals. And if you're if you're taking the stevia that's powdered and it's white, that means that was also processed with chemicals. It should be green. Stevia is a leaf. It's a green leafy plant. And if they just took that green leafy plant and, you know, sun or air dried it for a couple of days or, you know, 110 degrees, 115 degrees, that would dry and they would and they would gently grind up that green leaf. It would become a green powder. That's about 40 times sweeter than sugar. That's when you know you have a good stevia. So for you stevia people out there that like it, that's an upgrade. If you don't like stevia, now you can go back, try the green powder if you've been doing white powder, or try Stevita brand stevia in the liquid form. They they actually, what I love is they, uh, um, instead of using um, alcohol as a preservative, use grape seed extract, which is awesome, right? So that's, that's a naturally occurring substance. That's also um, going to help you boost your immune system. Right. So we're trying to get away from sugar. But when you when you put alcohol in something to suspend it, to preserve it, when you put the alcohol in your body, what does alcohol convert to sugar? So it's kind of an oxymoron there to to have a non sugar stevia with alcohol base because it's 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 silly. But a lot of people don't go to that depth. Right. So for more information and stuff like that, it's all on our website at chemicalfreebody.com. You could join the group coaching. And for our listeners, I'll give you a heads up. When you purchase products, you get a one time offer. You can come into the group for pennies on the dollar and as long as you stick around you can you stay in there but even if you don't kick the tires for a month you can keep all the guides and the manuals and that shopping guide well that's awesome i mean yeah see i i didn't know a lot about a lot of this stuff so i'm going to be uh again i'm going to be researching a lot of this um my yeah. other question is kind of it's kind of selfish in a way in terms of you know what i like to do which is skiing and i'm a high altitude mountaineer as well and i've always tried to research what might help boost you know, blood oxygen or red blood cell production, things like that. Do you, you know, is there a source or do you know the answer to that? Uh, I've kind of read mixed things and then there's medical studies and stuff that are being done, but I don't, I don't really know if there's too many of them out there. Is there a place where I can go look for that as well? Yeah, you know, actually, um, this is a, oh, I'm, I'm so glad you brought this up because almost in the beginning of my career, this question got brought up. Um, by somebody who was going to go run. Actually, it was Pat Militich. He's one of my coaching clients. Um, he's a UFC former Uf, uh, Hall of Famer and world champ. And he was going to do the, oh, I don't think it's, it's not the bad one. Maybe it's the bad one. Anyway, it was a, it was a um, ultra marathon, a hundred mile race up in the Colorado Rockies. Yep, the, the ultras. 
Yeah, the ultra marathon. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, anyway, I can't remember if it was the bad. I don't think it was the bad water. It was, it was another one. Um, God, I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, he's like, dude, I'm going to go up there and train. What do you got? So we put like a little package together for him. Um, a couple of our things and a couple things from a couple different other companies. And um, I just can't speak to it clearly right now because I'd have to go dig up my notes and stuff. But there, there is there is some stuff that we did for that. Um, and then I also did it again for um, a gal who was a business associate that um, was a she was a, a lowlander, she called herself. And she uh, went to hike the ink up in the Incas, you know, in Peruvian mountains. And she knew it was going to kick her butt because they were just going to get there and start, boom, go right up there and go hiking. So, you know, it takes a few, couple days to acclimate and get those cells built up and stuff, the red blood cells and all that stuff. So we gave her um, we gave her that that little cocktail, too. So um, definitely could do that. Um, I would also recommend um, uh, in that case, if we have a water machine that we hook people up with. It's at mypurifiedwater.com. And um, you can get this machine and it actually charges your body or your your water and your cells with molecular hydrogen, which is pretty freaking awesome. If you drink, well, you have to be careful in the beginning until you get really clean. You want to, you start, you just drink a quart of it in the morning and you put a little salt under your tongue afterwards, a little like Himalayan salt or whatever. And, um, dude, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like you can get high on water. Like I'm, 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 I'm a little tired today because I've only had one quart of it. Usually I have three by now, uh, three by now. Um, I've just been go, go, go. Cause we had a huge party this weekend, everything. But anyway, like I drink three quarts of that water the first time but I eat really clean. You should never do this. If you get this, if you go to mypurifiedwater.com and buy one of those units, do not, do not consume three quarts of this water. You will be detoxing so fast. It will put you in your chair. You will get sick. You'll have cold and flu like symptoms. You want to do one for a while and work your way up. So I've warned you, but I drank three of them because I've, I've been detoxing and on this journey for 11 years, eight years at the time. And dude, I was high on water for six hours. And then I called the lady up and bought the machine afterwards. And I've been high on water ever since. That's and, amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's freaking awesome. So there's just, there's a lot of things you can do, but yeah, we have some supplements and stuff like that, that I could uh, refer to you. Um, yeah, that'd be great. But yeah, that would be awesome. I love that. I think my other, my other question for you was, yeah, as we are getting into like the cold and flu season, I mean, everyone talks about taking zinc and stuff like that. And what do you recommend for, you know, staving off and keeping your immune system boosted? Well, I think number one is stress, right? So when people are stressed out, most people have zero tools to deal with it. You know, most guys, let's be honest, we don't even, you know, I'm tough. I don't have stress. Leave me alone. That's, I'm not a wussy, right? So, but the reality is, is like you do, okay? Whether you think you know, how tough you are, you can just, you know, I'm not going to say who it is, but there's a, quite a few people in my life. They're dudes. They're very close to me. And they have the John Wayne mentality, yet they're an absolute train wreck with their health. They're in pain. So if you don't want that in your old age, you got to get your act together now. And even if you are in your old age, you can still get your act together because you can live now in the in the present. You can start making changes. It's just changing your inputs, right? So sleep is huge and reducing stress is huge. I would say those two things are very, very important in drinking copious amounts of water. Um, you know, when they say cold and flu season, the reality is, um, Dean, is that there is no such thing as cold and flu season. What happens is, is that we have a lot of stress. We have kids going back to school. We have, and then there's Halloween and lots of candies and parties and Christmas parties and up late and stress and financial stress and trying to get the tree and the presents and make it and traveling and all this stuff and up late nights and more drinking and all this stuff. And we lower our immune system. The bugs are always there. Every single virus on this planet, flu and everything, colds and stuff, and every, every bacteria on this planet, every mineral on this planet is in your body right now. Let's be clear about this. It's all in your body. It's when the immune system drops, when the walls come down to the castle, then the bugs can get in. The viruses, the bacteria, the molds, the yeast, the fungus, the bacteria, they're kind of right there. They just start taking over, right? So we always have that. So it's not like some, you know, alien shoots a flu virus or Corona into you. We always have this stuff all the time. Now, the Corona thing being a spike protein from what we've what we've researched from a systems approach is it was it a man. It's a man made spike protein. So this is a version of the cold virus that was man made and, and put out there. But irregardless what you think or your thoughts are in it, it's out there. It's not going to go away ever. 
it's always going to be out there. It's always going to be mutating. And it's, it's, it has been mutating. It mutates all the time. That's what viruses do. That's what bacteria do. They mutate all the time. You couldn't keep up. You couldn't give them enough names. If you, if you were to follow all the mutations and the variations, you couldn't do this, but they do that as fear tactics to sell something. And that's what they've been doing with, on you see on the news, they come up with the Omicron and you know, this, the Delta virus, the, the, the version or whatever. These are things, fear tactics to scare people and sell them. I'm here to tell you, well, guess what? There's like a bazillion variations happening all the time in nature. That's what's going on. We have part of our immune system is called the, well, we have the innate and the adaptive. And we also have a part called the interferon system. And the interferon system of our immune system wants to take a hit. It wants to do some push-ups so it can build up stronger chest muscles. It wants to take a hit because when you have when you get exposed to a new variation or whatever, then it's going to build a thousand new variation defenses and become one thousand times stronger. That's called building herd immunity. You're actually building your own immune system. We're always always building and building and building and building our immune system from the time we are born. As soon as we go through the vaginal um, uh, deal and we get all those. Uh, bacteria and stuff start going in our mouth and our eyes and then we we start breastfeeding on our mom our mom's transferring all these these very important antibodies into our body through breast milk these things are very critical and people have gotten away from that with c-sections and i'm not going to breastfeed i'm too busy these things and then and then parents are bitching and moaning and complaining later because their kids are sick and they got throat nose and ear infections all the time and they're blasting with antibiotics and they can't seem to figure it out and they have to take time off of work well um you better get back to nature because we are nature. Your body's mostly made of water. That's in nature. Bacteria in your gut, same ones in the soil. That's nature. And your body's full. Of, if you, if you, you know, put you in a, uh, an oven and cooked you, you're going to cook down to some minerals. So where do you, where do you get minerals? Nature. So we are nature and we've just been detached from nature. And that's where all these problems are coming from. So to answer your question, number one is turn off the damn news. Quit getting stressed out, living in fear mode. Get a meditation, some breath work into your life. Get some good sleep. Start having a nighttime routine before you go to bed. Turn off the blue lights, you know, and start reading some books. Give your uh, partner a foot massage and maybe she'll massage you too, right? And then just settle in and get some good night's sleep and start focusing on that. Even if you think you're a night owl, go to bed half an hour earlier and then a month later, go a half an hour earlier until you can get closer to 10 o'clock and get closer to those circadian rhythms of life. Now, to take supplements and stuff like that to boost your immune system, Absolutely. That would be something that would be very wise today with 85% of the nutrients farmed out of our soil. So our um, green 85 is like a multivitamin, multimineral. Uh, it's it's it, this, this, this product that I showed you, that's a really good one. And I'll just out of the bag, Carter, even before my show, I'll let you know, we have a product coming out called VStack. And everybody who's a customer will get an email um, very soon, um, about four weeks out, and you can pre-order it. It has naturally occurring vitamin C. Vitamin A, vitamin D3, quercetin, zinc, and the fulvic humic acid all in a little two-ounce bottle. And you'll be able to get well, way more than you could possibly imagine in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, a way that's going to go through the mucous membrane in the mouth. And in 30 seconds, it'll be doused in your entire bloodstream. We are going to bypass the digestive tract where people have so many issues. They have so many issues trying to absorb things. Only about 10 to 30% of the food and the supplements you're taking are actually getting through the intestinal lining into the bloodstream. We're gonna, you're going to have 100% uptake with this product, just like in our Turmeric 100 anti-inflammatory product, and it's going to blow people's minds because that is going to be a very easy way because people are spending, dude, like probably 140 to 400 bucks a month trying to put all those together in really good absorbable forms. We did it all in one product, so that'll be available pretty soon. So that's the... That's the breaking Inside news. City. That's my Christmas present. Yeah, I'll send you a six pack. <laughs> he likes beer. <laughs> Stop it. That's no, I, I love Carter, dude. Look at him. He's drinking water out of a glass jar. He's yeah. smart. He's smart. Hey, how, how much more energy and how much weight have you lost since you met me? Dude, I'm like through the roof. I mean, I, you know, I've got the, I've got my big 50th coming up too. So doing all that planning and uh, I saw that. That's when I probably have to show up. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. You should definitely, I mean, we can thumb wrestle as soon as we meet each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then because my because of all the stuff that I'm taking now, I mean, watch out. All right. Well, Dean, any more yeah. questions, brother? 
Well, I think, you know, the, we touched on, on the nature and, and we talked earlier in the, the previous segments about finance, the industries. And do you think that there is a balance or we're going to find a balance between, you know, what's going on and, and, you know, human discovery in, in terms of nature, but also, you know, what we want to do synthetically and biotech and what's been going on. Do you think that there's a balance that we're, we're going to be able to have as, you know, as the future rolls on? Well, I think what's going to happen, I mean, the reality is I try to live in the present moment, but the reality is, is that unfortunately people don't do anything until they have to, right? So, I mean, we're, I think we're kind of getting there. You know, when you have like half the people, half the people listening here today are going to die of cancer if you don't make some changes. And a lot of it's not our fault because of all these pollutants in the, in the water and the food and the air and the, I mean, it's everywhere and the carpet and the clothes you're wearing. It's like air fresheners. All these things are off. I mean, they spray the damn TV screens and stuff with anti uh, um, fire retardants and stuff like that. Right. So, and those things cause cancer. Right. They put cancer causing agents in most of the shampoos. It's called sodium lauryl sulfate. That's just one of them. So I think what's going to happen is, is that it's OK to advance technology, but you can do it with nature. Unfortunately, big businesses, I gotta give an example like you could take soy as an example, like uh, Henry Ford did. And he built a car and instead of using metal, he used soy. Panels were made out of soy and they were like freaking tough like gun turrets on like destroyers, doo, 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 those things and those battleships and stuff. They made those, those were, you can make them out of soy, yeah. but what they do is then they genetically modify the soy so they can sell it to you and patent it. And it's just, it's a whole big long story about a whole thing, but um, you know, we, we could do things in nature. It like, it's one of the things that I'm doing. It's like our company's chemical free body. I don't want to have anything to do with plastic or chemicals, but guess what? We have um, some of our products are in plastic right now. I was I was literally physically upset and in tears when I started my company because we were going to use these other pouches that were like made out of rice paper and they're compostable. I actually wanted to put seeds impregnated in the pouches so that if they blew away down the road, flowers would grow out of them. Like, that's that kind of cool. cool. Yeah, that's the goal. So we're still looking at this stuff. But to get started in business, I, I had a mentor say, hey, look, you got to get going first. You can change the world later. But you have the entire industry against you right now and everything and the pricing models and all that stuff. And in, in, in your profit margin is terrible compared to everybody else because the raw materials, you don't skimp at all. So it's like I'm, you know, next year is like when I'm we're finally after seven years getting to a point where we're profitable. You know, last couple of years, the first five years, it wasn't. It was like using up all my funds, everything that, you know, as a financial, I save, save, save. Thank God I did. I was able to push my dream forward and do this and bring, and bring this awareness and bring products out to people, which I wasn't expecting to do that. And and now we'll have something that we can help people. But I'm looking into packaging because my goal is to be 100 percent chemical free all the way through soup to nuts with this company. But I think it's possible. I think it just really depends on, you know, the people that um uh, that are listening, everybody listening here has to understand that you are driving industry with your purchasing dollars. So if you stop giving your money to companies that are screwing you and screwing um, uh, the planet, then they'll, they'll make some changes or go away and you can start giving your money to companies that actually have a heart that are giving good things for your body and your family's body that, that don't, they're just not going to, they're not in it just to make a bunch of money. They're in it to provide, a, uh, to change your life and to help, you know, provide a really good product. That's what it really boils down to. So the, the, I think the only real way we can vote that actually counts today, because I, we know through um, the truth, freedom and health movement, I got my hat on here. And we've discovered that the, the, the weighted race feature inside of these election software is like, why would your, why would your um, think about this? Why would your vote go in as a fraction? Shouldn't it go in as a whole number, one person, one vote? Why would why would the election software be set up to put your your vote in as a fraction? And then we found out they were actually able to change them with a weighted race feature and, and give weight. So we know the voting stuff is uh, is compromised. It's selections, not elections. But you still can vote with your dollars, and that's how we change industry, guys. That's how we have to get educated, and we have to start looking and reading labels, and we have to start purchasing uh, products from people that, uh, like I said, have a heartbeat. Solid advice, and I appreciate the education actually on on all that. So I'm I'm going uh, 
right after we're off the air here, I'm going to go and uh, go through my cabinets. <laughs> <So laughs> All right. Dude, that's, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Feel free to <laughs> hook up with me through, through Carter too. I'd do a little. Oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. Well, on, that's uh, great. It, it's funny. Just, just real fast. And we'll let our enrichers go. But um, on that note, I remember whenever, I first started working with Tim and learning all this stuff. My wife is literally like in the cabinet. She's like, Oh, that's gone. Oh, that's gone. Oh, that's gone. I mean, she's just, so I'm just like, that was like a brand new bottle. And she's like, it's out. It's gone. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, we tell people like, look, get a refund. Just get, they'll send you your money back. Just get them, get your freaking money back. You know, if, if not, then just throw it out, move on. That's the best way to do it. Take it off like a band aid quickly and just move forward with your life. And, um, and that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Solid advice. Perfect. Yep. Awesome. Thanks awesome. for coming on, Dean. Yes. This is awesome. <clears throat> I really appreciate it, guys. This is this is a lot of fun. We'll have to do this again. Yeah, we, we absolutely will. Maybe maybe we'll do a, a follow up. Uh, maybe we'll do like a Fourth uh, of July, right? That sounds great. Yeah, Let's well, do hold that. On. Uh, maybe I should coach Dean, put him on our products, and then if he wins a gold medal, then we'll have him on. There we go. All right. Put him in the Olympics. I'll take that challenge. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now you're talking. Hey, and Richard, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast Show. Uh, I am your co-host, um, Mr. Chemical Free, Chemical Free Body. Obviously, thank you very much for sharing all of your insights into giving Dean some things to go back and do some research on, do a little bit of homework. Normally, he's probably the one giving homework. Now he's got some homework to go do. I got so. homework too, man. Cause I got to go look up that Dean. We'll have to connect. Cause I got to look up that uh, red blood cell saturation deal for. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, cool. Can't believe awesome. I can't remember it. I need, maybe I need some more uh, ginkgo biloba actually, yeah. or Bacopa maniera. That's another thing for, for brain tonic. So. Oh my All right. Word. Sorry, Carter. I keep talking. You're, yeah, hey, we'll, just, we'll just keep on going until the sun <laughs> goes down, Yeah. <laughs> which obviously in Portland, Oregon, the sun's still up right now. Right. It? Yeah, it's it's still out. It's just overcast. So if you like, you know, it's if you're a duck hunter or goose hunting, you, this is a great day for that. But um, other than that, it's uh, pretty dreary out. So time to snuggle up and have some some healthy chai tea lattes or something, matcha lattes, and snuggle up with your loved ones. Ooh, that yeah. sounds good. That sounds like what what I'm gonna do. So hey, and Richards, thank you again for joining us for another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. As we mentioned on the show. To see all of our previous guests and all of our other recordings, you can go to our website at www.thehealthandwealthpodcastshow.com. Uh, I want to thank Dean Soames of Three Bell Capital for being our guest on the show today. And my fantastic co-host, Mr. Chemical Free Body himself, Tim James. I am your co-host, Carter Wilcoxon, CEO and co-founder of Epic Services Company. Wishing you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Until next time, live a life of abundance, and we will see you next time on the Health and Wealth Podcast Show. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. Hey, Enrichers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies, so tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.